Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and to keep up with the uh, the theme before the 21st to dispel the myth and the lies, and to bring out the truth of what's really going on in our world, we have, I should call you professor, but you're also doctor, <laughs> Bob Teal. You're also a top naturopathic doctor, but also an expert on prophetic analysis. Uh, yeah, You belong to the Worldwide Church of God, I believe, too, and of course you've done an amazing academic study of these issues, and you you gave us a list today, which was going to be 11, uh, 10 uh, issues that prove that, of course, the Mayan calendar is incorrect and all this stuff about the 21st, but also you give the uh, what the prediction is that they say, and then the real truth about each of these issues. You come up, since you gave me that list thirty yesterday, with an 11th one, which don't tell me yet, because we get to go through it, we want people to go, oh my gosh, this is what's going on. So let's systematically go through this list of 10 items and uh, people will be able to look at it themselves they can actually look at the reference links because there's links that will be posted up here um let's go through this uh, list here the prediction of the uh, number one which is the chilam belem 16th century mayan book of the jaguar priest and uh, let's go through that okay well that that's actually okay getting into the mayan prophecy first of all let me just say this to your listeners about 2012 uh, the reality is that we've, we've seen it downplayed in the media, which is partially good and partially bad. It's true that the world's not going to end in 2012, so we don't want people to get all uh, frantic-y and panicky and saying, okay, it's going to end. On the other hand, the media has been misleading people. The media has gone out and said, and I've seen experts, I was watching either Discovery Channel or History Channel or Fox or one of these last week or two weeks ago, one of these experts going on there and said, uh, the Mayans really didn't predict the end of the world. This end of the world idea just came out 10 or 20 or 30 years ago on the Internet and blah, 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 blah. Now, that's nonsense. The, the Mayans absolutely did predict the end of the world. It's just politically incorrect to say that. And the reality is, though, it depends on which Mayans. Up until around uh, the 10th century, the Mayan civilization was very strong and powerful. And up to, until then, they probably didn't predict, or not too many of them, predict the end of the world. But after it started to fall apart, then other Mayans started to come up with different views. And one was in the Shilam Balim, which you mentioned before, which is called the Book of the Jaguar Priest. So this is a uh, prophetic book, if you will, uh, that, that the Mayans had. But it wasn't written down until the 1500s. The reason for that is the Mayans didn't have our kind of alphabet until then. They ran across the Spaniards. The Spaniards taught them. And so I'm going to read you the, the, the prediction. This is the most clear, concise prediction that the world is going to end uh, in a flood, according to the Mayans. And let me read you this. This is from the Shilam Balim. It's also in my book, 2012, The Rise of Secret Sect. I quote it. It says, But when the law of the Katun, which is a calendar cycle, has run its course, the God will bring about a great deluge again, which will be the end of the world. Okay, so you read that. Okay, the Mayans predict the end of the world. Okay. But then, let me read the next part. When this is over, then our Lord Jesus Christ will descend over the valley of Jehoshaphat, beside the temple town of Jerusalem, where he redeemed us with his holy blood. Now, wait a second. How hmm. ancient Mayan is that? The that's Mayan, not really ancient Mayan. That's a, that sounds no. like it's Spanish, doesn't it? Spanish yes. Catholic, probably. Yes. Yeah, so basically, though, and I've done a lot of research into this, what seems to have happened is that before the Spaniards came, the, the Mayans may have had a prediction about uh, one of their gods, the Bolu, come to, to return and to cause devastation. And after they heard of Jesus Christ, they may have changed the prophecy and put his name in there. But we've got a problem now with that because the primary book that mentions Jesus Christ happens to be the Bible. Right. And the Bible in Genesis chapter 9, which your listeners can look it up in verses 11 through 15, says the world's not going to end in a flood. Right. That's, that's problem number one with the prediction. Problem number two is, is a cartoon is a 19.7 year calendar. And it's possible that the end of a cartoon that they're referring to is the particular one that ends next Friday. On the other hand, I've looked at the Shilam Balim and the other things around it, and it looked like it's talking about a slightly different period of time. So this particular one uh, is not going to happen. The world's not going to end in the flood next, next week. No. And that, again, that's one of the predictions that, that's out there. Uh, the, the other one, you, you, we, were, we talked during the break about there's a Hindu. His name is Vijay Kumar, and he claims to be the man who's seen God or knows God or something like this. And he claimed that Hindu writings show that a bloody disaster was going to come in the year 2012, 
related to a warring figure known as the Bhagwan Kalki. Now, for your listeners' general information, the Bhagwan Kalki, I think, is sort of the equivalent of the Beast of Revelation 13. Okay? Right. So I believe that, now, that part of this is actually a satanic plot to get right. people to accept a false leader when he rises up. Now, there are prophecies from the Hindus that the Bhagwan Kalki is going to rise up. That is true. Okay? But what's not true is that he's going to do this and the world's going to be a, a, a bloody disaster because of it next Friday. <laughs> okay? Yeah, exactly. and, and, and other Hindu scholars and other Hindus who have studied Hind the Hindu religion still are looking for this Bhagwan Kalki to rise up, which, again, I think he's not going to be a good person. Some Hindus think he is, but I think they've misunderstood. But it's not going to be in 2012. So that's that would be prediction number two. Number two. Okay. Yeah, so, so round number three, we've actually knocked off two uh, false ideas. Okay, it's number three. Number three is almost hilarious, and it's almost hilarious because I read it in another source, which I'll mention later in the, in the show, and that is there is a, a device that the uh, Confucianists and the Taoists, these are basically Asian religions, use to help predict the, 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 the future. It's kind of like people looking at horoscopes. Except right. in this case, it's like three coins, and you throw them, you get a head or a tail, and depending on if you get head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, head, tail, whatever, there's this book you look up, and it kind of tells you what that means. Yeah, the I Ching, right? Yeah, the I Ching, right, it's called the Book yeah. of Changes. And it's commonly used for, kind of like a lot of Americans, not me, of course, I don't dabble in astrology, astrology but use astrology. Okay, that's kind of how they use it. Yeah, well, anyway. there's no more suspicious people, by the way, than the Asian peoples of China, Korea, Japan, etc. These people are, that's why the biggest gambling institutions in the world are in Asia. They're not in Las Vegas, they're in Asia. Yeah, like in Macau and places like that. There's exactly, a it's, a, it's like uh, three or four times bigger than Las Vegas. It's big. And I, have, I haven't been to them, but I, I, I do know that they have them over there. Well, yeah. anyway, so a couple of Westerners named the McKenna brothers, they went and they said, well, if you look at all the permutations you can have with these 64 combinations and you pick a particular date, this ends in uh, mid to late November of 2012. Well, that wasn't uh, important enough to a lot of people, so they changed their start date. And yeah, now yeah. they have a date that it ends December 21st, 2012. Now, I'm not going to question your methodology. Uh, maybe it was right, maybe it's wrong. But the reality is that the Confucianists and Taoists don't use the I Ching like this. They, they never come this. This is, this is a Western twist. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a guy that used a computer program and his own for personal formula that somehow he got revealed. And he used this as a predictive thing, similar to the, um, I call it the Ouija board mining. You, I, I could add a 12th item, by the way, on this list of predictions, is WebBot. That, by the way, predicted publicly on national radio shows and elsewhere that Dr. Bill Deagle is a major insider of the government and I'm CIA. And you can just... Wipe that right off. It's on all these <laughs> History Channel and all these other things. No, Dr. Deagle is not. In fact, I have been a thorn in the side of the New World Order since the day I was born. So, you know, and people say, oh, that's exaggeration. No, it's not. I mean, the devil has been after me. I was pronounced dead at birth. I died at eight and a half. I'm still here, and I've gone through living hell to stand against the darkness, not to be with it. And so when anybody just tells you that, you can dismiss anything else they say, even though they, people say they predicted 9-11, they predicted this and that. No, these people are fools, and uh, that would be number 12 on the list, so we'll get to that later. But, uh, you know, this is another example of false prophets. By the way, this is a prophetic revelation that Jesus gave in Matthew 24 that, about the rise of the false prophets. And this 2012 thing is a end-time prophecy of the Most High God, Jesus, the Father in the flesh. That's his words. And we're back with Dr. Bob Teal, Ph.D. And uh, the uh, website is called thesecretsect.com. Is that right? Yes, but it, as, as we were talking during the break, we're going to have a special offer for your listeners, and they're really, really going to want to pen, 
or pencil for this one because yeah. mm-hmm. our book, our, my book, 2012, The Rise of Secret Sect, you can buy it on Amazon for 20 bucks. but if you just call our toll-free number, 1-800-675-2012, we will send you a copy for free. You will not be on a mailing list. We will not ask you for money. You're going to get a machine, so just uh, say, spell your name and uh, parts of your address if we can't understand them. Repeat that number slower because okay. you talk like okay. Dr. Deagle too fast. <laughs> That's because I've done Dr. Deagle's show before. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're trying anyway. to keep up. Go ahead. Uh, what's uh, okay. that uh, number again? The number is 800-675-2012. That's 800-675-2012. And, what and again, it's is free. This is a gift, free book. literally. Free, book. free. Free. F-R-E-E. No free. strings attached. No sign-up list. No callbacks. No entering databases. No mailing free. list. Right. But, oh, you get, one, you get one thing, actually. You get a list of paper with 24 predictions in the book that have already now happened. That's that's right, and that's what your listeners are going to get. And at least three or four more predictions are going to happen this month from the book. Uh, they'll be that, that will be confirmed. Again, it's absolutely free. There's no catch at all, and it's and again, if you get a busy set, you're going to get our machine when you call. Just leave your name and address. If you get a busy signal, call later, and we'll send it right out to you. Again, it's eight hundred six seven five twenty twelve. Right. Okay, let's, right. let's proceed now. Go we're now knocking off more, more claims, more predictions to knock off. So we're dealing with a McKenna issue, which is this... Uh, the I Ching. Know, the I Ching and this crazy formula, it's, no, it's not going to happen. Okay. No, it's not going to happen. Then the next one is the one that's actually the most legitimate for uh, predicting the end of the world by the Mayans on December 21st, 2012. And that right. is, there's the last page of the Dresden Codex, and by the way, people who call to get the free book, there's a picture of the Dresden Codex in there so they can see this page. And in this page, the picture, is water coming out of the mouth of a serpent. Right. And near this serpent, you'll see a female-looking figure and a male-looking figure, which are sort of humanoid. They're not really human. And back in 1906, a Western Mayan researcher concluded that this meant that the Mayans were predicting the end of the world he also on the top of this, and you can't see it very well, but there's some astronomical figures, one related to the transit of Venus, which is something right. that only happens twice every 253 years. It happened June of this year. It happened in 2004. And so they felt the transit of Venus meant it was going to be uh, in 2004 or 2012. And then there's something that looks sort of like a galactic alignment, now, as you and I have chatted before, we know it's not a perfect galactic alignment. There's going to be some kind of alignment. It's right. a minor one. Is the astronomers basically think this is a joke, but there is some kind of an alignment. Based upon that, that does tend to point to a December 21st, uh, 2012 date. Now, having said that, others have said, well, wait a second. It's water coming out of a serpent, but it's going over blackened figures, which perhaps represent evil. So maybe evil is supposed to be cleansed. In fact, there's only two figures, not a whole planet or something. Uh, others have said, well, well, well maybe they're, they're, predicting- they're, they're preserving its water. If you actually look at the serpent that they're talking about, the serpent is a galactic serpent. It's not necessarily water. They may be interpreting it that. It could be even the tail of a comet, for all we know. It could uh, be all kinds talking. of things. But yeah. either way, so, the world's not yeah. going to end the flood next week. And, uh, no, absolutely not. That, that's the important point is that they, if you actually look at it, and you've got the link here too, into my Mayan calendar, might, uh, might 2012 mean something. Uh, the fact is that uh, the Dresden Codex just has this literally, I think, one or two pages that has this. I mean, they made all these extended analyses of these, saying it's going to be water from the serpent. The other thing is the two figures you talked about, I've heard an interpretation by Jonathan Gray and others that it may be uh, referring to the galactic alignment with the the uh, sign of Ophiuchus, which is supposed to be between Scorpio and uh, Libra. And uh, that this is, in fact, this, uh, the sign of Scorpio, which is the archer, and Libra, which is the sign of uh, you know the virgin Libra or the female. Uh, this sign in between is at the sign of the galactic alignment. Now, what's interesting, and I'll throw this out to while we're talking about this, is that on December 21st, the full energy is going to be activated with the sign of Kali over the Super Hadron Collider. So these people that are the people that run CERN are actually going to run it at full energy right on the 21st. I mean, to me, that's ceremonial. Obviously, they're getting some jollies out of doing this on that specific date. Yeah, well, well, that actually sort of ties into the next thing, the next prediction that I've got. Yeah. And and that is the fifth one. And some have claimed that a massive solar storm could happen in 2012 and eventually end Western civilization as we know it. Now, here's where this is tricky. It is true that a massive 
solar flare and or an electromagnetic pulse weapon could knock out uh, Western civilization at least to a degree. And some have said that this will happen from a comet, but as it turns out, according to NASA scientists, while NASA, while a, while a comet technically could create a greater solar flare, and a solar flare could, in theory, wipe out electronics and computers and such, they don't think it's at all possible for this year. <laughs> and no, and, I, and I don't believe this could be any kind of a governmental conspiracy because if these people really mm-hmm. believe that they would have all, there'd be a bunch of them who would have fled already. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, what I hear, though, is in 2013, 2014 will be the peak of Solar yeah. Cycle 24, and that there really is a possibility of a Carrington-style event, and it doesn't yeah. even need a comet or a nearest object like a red dwarf star to occur. We've already had X and M-class flares that have occurred even in the past five, six years. The biggest was 2005. That was very big. It was so big they had to create these new classes, and luckily it wasn't named directly, but it did glance by the Earth. The one that just happened a few weeks ago was an X-class flare, but the sun was pointing pointing in the other direction, and if it had pointed toward Earth, we wouldn't be talking today on air. We would have no satellite communications, and our ground-based power networks would be dead. Congress was passed the bill three and a half years ago. Senator Lisa Murkowski kills it in the Senate as a rhino Republican uh, for political reasons, but the fact is the scientists like Mishu Kaku and 40,000 Solar and other scientists have said, we need to harden the grid. This is not something. So the reality is this is a real serious problem that needs to be addressed. In fact, I spent an entire evening with Dr. Isley, who's a physicist who owns the Vitamin Cottage, who founded in 1958 the World Constitution Parliament Association. He gave me the Federation of Earth's documents that over 160 nations have signed. And he told me clearly there, geoengineering the upper atmosphere on classified black op projects, and disclosed everything to me because he knew I had Q-level security clearance at U.S. Space Command as one of their civilian doctors on contract taking care of the blackout projects where they're flying at a Buckley and Peterson and other airports in Arizona and elsewhere around the world putting up in the high atmosphere 73 to 80,000 feet nanoparticles to deflect to CME. That's the primary reason for the upper atmospheric nanoparticles. It's not weather modification. That's a lower atmospheric. It's to change the albedo of the earth, but it's primarily to deflect the CME so our ground-based communications and our power networks don't get fried. That's what they've been doing. And I'm the only person who said this on air, and I've repeated it over the years, and they were going to get it in this program about this video on high-altitude uh, atmospheric uh, manipulations with nanoparticles. They put paramagnetic barium, thorium, and aluminum out there primarily to deflect the CME. So this is a very big project that costs trillions of dollars, and it's been going on since the early 80s. Well, as I said, th- but uh, this month, a comet's not supposed to call, to make to make no, this happen. No, absolutely it's not, not. And it's not planned, well, and, and and that actually ties well, into number six. Right. You know, there there are people that say planet uh, Nibiru is supposed to hit, whatever whatever no. that's supposed to be. And Another the astronomy says there's no such thing like this, and it's it's not go it's not going to hit uh, uh, next week. <laughs> They, they, they could they could tell. They could well, buy it. <laughs> there are, we talk about this with Professor McCanny every week, but we'll get into that in a minute. In fact, actually, McCanny said that they've discussed. Next prediction. Uh, we're up to number number five. So I, I think a uh, solar storm, as Miss Yukaku and others say, I think is, I'd say in the next five to eight years, say before 2020, the chances of a major CME knocking out power in somewhere in the northern hemisphere are virtually 95% plus. Well, not only uh, the CME risk, you also got the Iranian risk uh, from, from an EMP or somebody else trying well, to... Well, the Iranians it. have been testing for 20 years how to put up at 80 to 100,000 feet a, uh, a rocket that will cause an EMP pulse uh, 200 miles off the coast that could wipe out 1,500 radio miles of North America. So if you put one on the East Coast and West Coast, except for maybe parts of the center of the United States, everything would be black. And people say, oh, that can't happen. It sure as heck can. Uh, EMP weapons are the primary weapon of any battlefield, not nuclear weapons, EMP weapons, which is why when I took care of employees working at Atmel Corporation, which makes the ferromagnetic chip the only chip that's 100% radiomagnetic proof, including radiation proof, uh, they had limited production facilities. They're in our rockets and other uh, military equipment. But even the hardened tube systems and the uh, Tupolev jets the Russians have are not completely EMP proof. The only EMP proof chips on the earth are made in America in Colorado Springs, period. 
And uh, people should be aware that the fact is in any battlefield in the future, EMP weapons, which the Chinese have, and they've given to the Iranians and Syrians, the Chinese have these EMP weapons. They have, and a lot of them, the technology was literally given to them, and then they advanced it further. Uh, it's going to be a primary thing in a battlefield. So if we start a war with Iran, whether it's now or five or ten years from now, EMP weapons will be part of that battlefield, not just in the war theater, but here in North America. All right. Well, I'll get back to the list like you asked me. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, on the list, we left off actually with number six, that uh, there's no yeah. planet uh, Nibiru that's about to hit. And indirectly related to that, there's a uh, actually a town in France that's called... Uh, Pick the Bukharak that someone thinks there's actually an alien spaceship in there and people should go oh there my and, gosh, will, that, it, and, that, and that will take them away on uh, December 21st. <laughs> now, that's get crazy. this. Yeah. Well, no, it's, the, the people up there are sick and tired of this. They're closing it off to tourists. You can't come Good. there. Okay, the tourists, you can't go there anymore. So, but the, and those people don't expect that to happen, and the world's not going to end. All right. Well, anyway, getting back to the predictions, and I've seen this prediction on a bunch of yeah, television that's another, programs. another wacky prediction, but you see, the real danger, uh, we talked about this with Professor McKenney, who's on every Wednesday in the third hour, that near Earth object, there's at least 40 planet-sized objects in the Oort cloud region, some of those hyper-elliptical orbits. Yeah, there's something. There are wandering planets and stars, like it's almost certain from the ancient, and you can just look at a few predictions. One is every 25 million years is the a major extinction level event that occurs probably with the approach of a dwarf star there's also large comets all you need is a big comet to trigger off a coronal mass ejection and you can have a major extinction type level event or even just happen spontaneously you don't even have to have a comet the sun's acting very weird and if you had a Carrington style event happen today I mean People don't understand. Our power grid system, our current world, we have iPads and iPhones and GPS on your car and everything. Uh, it's not going to work. It's going to be gone. All right. I, I, yeah. we, we are definitely, we're definitely at risk for that kind of thing happening. Oh, yeah. And it's a real risk. And the problem is, here's what I'm really concerned is, people will then dismiss anybody as saying, oh, yeah, you fools that talked about 2012, December 21st. So they'll all go back to sleep and mock us because they'll say that we predicted the end of the world on December 21st and it didn't happen. No, we didn't. But we tell them there are real risks of wandering planets right. and so on. There are real risks of the CME. There are real risks of the magnetic flux shift, which is occurring. There's real risks. Five years ago, they discovered this. Five satellites flew through a hole of six, three, three million square miles. The luckily, it wasn't at the surface, but in the South Atlantic, the South Atlantic anomaly. These things are real. We're not making this up. This is published. The problem is that people want to say, oh, you people are the end of the world, or you're crazy. They're oh. not. This isn't dangerous. And they're, they're, they're not facing reality. Well, that's actually what, what, what part of 2012 is about, and that is a satanic plot to, to tell people that the world's not going to end. And the Apostle Peter warned that scoffers will rise up in the last days saying, where's the promises are coming? Things have always been like this, blah, 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 blah. And we're going to see right. more of that uh, not only uh, in the next week or two, but a couple of years from now, when, uh, so when some other things really seriously start to happen, people are going to point to the Mayan calendar. They're going to point to Harold Camping's predictions. They're going to point to all those things as, as oh, proof. Yeah. Those aren't and proof. And they're trying to say, oh, you people are out in the day past. You're crazy. Yeah. Even if we refer to scientists that look at extinction-level <laughs> events like these astronomers and astrobiologists, if we even tell them about CMEs and even refer to space websites like NASA. And, and the problem is, here's what's happening also, is Tier 1 science is closing down. The government and the military are closing down down information so we can predict earthquakes and volcanoes because most people don't realize solar and space weather triggers off earthquakes. When you have a CME, it rings the earth like a bell and can release an earthquake or super volcano. The fact is that we're not getting that data. They don't even talk about near-Earth objects. When I was one of the civilian doctors of U.S. Space Command, they've got giant armadas of these space-based weapon platforms aimed out in space to handle near-Earth objects as small as a pencil lead or as large as, you know, a mountain. And people don't understand that a lot of these whiz by us, and we have no idea that it's on its way. Right. We've had a lot of close calls, and, and people yeah. don't, don't realize the risk. And there's another expression, you know, just because you're paranoid doesn't prove no one's out to get you. Now, yeah, the exactly. end of the world, as I said, will not be next week. I saw some things on, I think it was the History Channel and, other, and, Discovery, and right. the Discovery Channel about Nostradamus. Right. And they have right. something called the so-called Lost Writings of Nostradamus. You're referring and, to number seven now in the predictions. That's right. right. I'm number seven on the predictions. And what the problem with that is that Nostradamus wrote what are called quatrains, which are basically four-line stanzas, if you will, cryptically written that people interpret about the end of the world. Well, the Lost Writings are pictures. 
and none of Nostradamus's other writings have pictures in them. So we're not sure that he did. They think it might have been. They think it might have been his son who wrote these. But yeah, he, it, could, it very well could have been. But what yeah. people have said is, well, because there's a couple of straight lines occasionally, and there are various uh, astrological figures in there from time to time. Say, okay, maybe Nostradamus was telling us the world was going to end in uh, 2012. I don't think so. I don't think that's what he was writing, but it doesn't really matter because it's not do, going do you know how one, Do you know how Nostradamus uh, divinated? Uh, basically, yes, but you can explain it for your listeners if you want. Okay. Uh, Nostradamus uh, was, a, uh, was an academic. He acquired a book called the Ancient Je- a Book of Egyptian or Chaldean Mysteries. It was used by the Chaldeans and the Egyptians for divinating. They used a brass bowl with water and vapors that were to alter their mind. And these vapors, they would stare into the bowl and actually see visions and dreams. So they're opening up what's called the astral or the third eye gate. Uh, in other words, he's using it by divinating with demons. Yeah, that's, and, that uh, was basically what yeah I've seen portrayals of yeah. him doing it. Right, and people need to understand that what he was using is a book that was used by the Chaldeans to fight Moses. These are the very technologies that were used by the ancient Chaldeans and the Egyptian high priests that were using to fight Moses, trying to prove that he was a false prophet. That's what they were doing. So Nostradamus used the same technology of the high priest to try to fight against Moses, the prophet of the Most High God. Well, right now I'm going to, I'm going to skip number eight because that'll take a while. So I want to skip through a couple more. I bet um, we'll get to it, though. Yeah, we probably will. Uh, yeah. Number nine is that uh, the Hopi Indians, they have uh, an oral tradition about a time of disaster or a time of berserk transition happening. And some have said, because of the Hopi prophecies, they were predicting that the world was going to end uh, now. But if you look into it further, you have a couple of issues. Unlike the Mayans, the Hopis were not astronomers, and they didn't really have calendar stuff to, to this degree. And related to it, if you go further, you, you find out what happened. Is somebody asked them the Hopis, and they said, well, could it happen in 2012? And they said, well, maybe. It's, it could be. It's not for sure. And so people said, well, because, 20, because, of the Mayan under, interpret, because of the interpretation of the Mayan calendar, ah, the Hopis must have been predu- predicting Yeah, in other words, they have a timeline, but they don't have dates, any dates. Right. They don't have any no dates, dates, but what they do all. have, what they do have, though, is they, they talked about being a time of berserk transition. Now, I'm not going to argue against this being a time of berserk transition. We may very well be in what Jesus called the beginning of sorrows. Well, I know we are. Not, Look at the right. you know, 500% increase in earthquakes since uh, Sendai, Japan. 500% increase in five-level earthquakes and uh, die in just another 7.3 last week. This is exactly as Jesus said in Matthew 24, and one of them is the rise of false prophecy. Well, before, before the break, I again want to mention to your listeners, they can get my book for free if they call 800-675-2012. 800-675-2012. Get it free. 2012 and the rise of the secret sect. Dr. Bob Teal back in a minute for the last segment. We're definitely going to be continuing this next week. So, Dr. Yeah. And Dr. Bob Teal will be back on next Monday for a follow-up on this. And uh, maybe we can have uh, even a, a, a cameo or have you back on the actual 21st for a quick uh, update on the 21st, which is ne- the Friday, uh, on our third hour. That would be really good to have you back for a few moments on hour three, Friday the 21st, as well as next Monday. But let's continue with this list. Okay, continuing with the list is there's – and this one, I want to read the title of this. This is from a guy named uh, Bruce McCarris. His name's not important, but the title of this is Alethos Talos, The Truth About the End Times. So just because people say something is the truth doesn't mean it's the truth. So here's the truth. Here's <laughs> yeah, what right, he wrote. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 2012 December, the great and terrible day of the Lord's vengeance and wrath, a CME, you and I were talking about CMEs earlier, which are right. those uh, uh, coronal mass ejections from the sun, uh, uh, so sun, sun strike. Then he say, says Isaiah thirty twenty six. It's the sixth right. seal. Worldwide devastation. Middle East is completely cleared. Psalm eighty three. A small Jewish remnant survive in Jerusalem. Isaiah four three. Many will die elsewhere, such as America. Isaiah seventeen. But most will survive. Okay. So just because somebody pretends or claims to believe the Bible, just because somebody tells you something's the truth, and just because somebody uh, 
tells you where you can look up the scripture doesn't mean one the scripture says what they said or two that they have any clue and this guy well he doesn't have the keys or is taken out of context and he's not really speaking with the authority of a prophet of the most high god he's speaking as a prophet ish ish which i think is really dangerous it's actually one of the prophecies of jesus is that people will come in my name saying these things and they're false prophets and they have no authority right so anyway, so that, that was, that was uh, 9 of the 10. Now we're going to go to number 8 for just a moment. And 8, uh, we'll, I'll try to do this one quickly so we'll have a chance to get to number 11. Uh, yeah. I did a radio show last week, and uh, the, the, the host was actually the most interested in this one. It says the Muslims have a prophecy that an Islamic leader called the Imam Mahdi is supposed to rise up in an even-numbered year. Well, the latest Islamic year, 1434, began uh, about a month ago on uh, November 15, 2012, and it runs until November 3rd of 2013. Well, uh, Iran's president, uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, he's a Shiite Muslim. He's claimed that this leader is supposed to rise up before he leaves office, which is supposed to be happening in this current Islamic year. And to do that, he believes he has to create and cause disaster. So this is the time period that he could cause disaster. Now, maybe he will do something foolish next week. Okay? Yeah, remember, that's, that's Ahmadinejad's interpretation. doesn't necessarily mean Ahmadinejad's hearing from, quote, God or even Satan. <laughs> but uh, Ahmadinejad thinks he's the one called to actually release the Imam Mahdi. Yes, he that's does his, believe uh, that. Yeah. And it's he believes that. Because... He's visited also what's called a well in Syria, in Damascus, where the Mahdi is supposed to come out of the well. You know that prophecy, too, do you? Right, and he was uh, there... Uh, in 2000 and let me think for a second. It was 2011. He was there in the fall of 2011. He was right. well. He was in Syria, so I presume that's when he, he went was to in the Damascus. Well. He went there to actually visit the the senior imams in the area and to visit the well because he believes he went and said some kind of Islamic prayers, expecting the Mahdi to come out of this well, right? Because he said a child descended down there. This child is going to come back out and be the Mahdi that will be the the, the great ruler that's going to bring Islam to the world. Yes. So anyway. Uh, there, there will be an Islamic leader rising up. It won't be the guy who's been supposedly in suspended animation for 1,400, 1,300 years. No, I don't know. Not at all. No, no. But, but this is a delusion. That they, if you're going to sell a lie, you have to have a really big one. It doesn't make even sense. All right. Well, now we're going to go to the bonus reason I was going to tell Ooh, your listener. But right. Before then, I want, to, I want to again tell your listeners again, my book, 2012, The Rise of Secret Sec, is 100% free. Even the phone call is free. 1-800-675-2012. We're not selling anything. You're not going to get on a nailing list. You're going to get a phone machine. Just leave your name and address. No one's going to try to sell you anything. There's no fast anything. Uh, Bill Deagle's known me for a long time, and he knows I'm, I'm no, a yeah, You're shooter. very reliable. You're not even asking for a credit card. You just want an address and right. a phone number so you can sh- ship the book out. That's all. That's all you want. You don't want a credit card or anything. You don't yep. want any credit cards or payment means. You just no, want nothing. an address. And, yeah. and they're going to get a machine, so no one's going to possibly try to, con- to, to change their mind. All right, right. well, this one... This is number 11, and this, this one, I have to admit, I was unaware of this one until today. Oh, my it gosh. Was, it was published over a year ago by World News Daily, and it's got to do with the great seal of the United States. Yes. And there's a, a guy by the name of Thomas Horn who claimed he was awakened by the Lord at 2 a.m. in 2008. Mm-hmm. And he says that uh, he was uh, unrecognized by the vast majority of people around the world. It's a great conspiracy of all time sitting right in open Washington, D.C., and at the Vatican. It's an ancient magical diagram, the lost symbol, which awaits its final use by the hidden hand guiding the secret destiny of America toward the year 2012. Jesus himself, in Matthew 24, may have set the date for the apocalypse around the year 2012. No, he didn't. Jesus, again... Uh, talk about the, the beginning of sorrows just being part of it. I'll accept that, but that's not it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The beginning of sorrows was the election of Barack Obama. Let's put it that way. That's close. <laughs> oh, anyway. That was the time of great sorrow. But I'm just being a little sarcastic here. Okay. But, you know, obviously, yeah. Please continue. All right, continuing anyway. Horn says, given the rejection of Jesus by the Orthodox Jews as Messiah, this coming could herald the coming of the Antichrist in 2012. Well, no, it's not. But it gets even further. He claims, mm-hmm. and this is what World News Daily wrote. Uh, let me read you this part. He talks about the stone. The, well, let me let me read this verbatim. The date at the base of the pyramid is 1776, which is not only the year the Declaration of Independence was signed, but also the beginning of a new Mayan cartoon. So we get to bring the Mayans in this again. A time yeah, period of another word, nine, I call them crossing prophecies, right? Yes. So we've got another te- technique of all these shows on Nat Geo and History Two Channel, etc. It's all the same foolishness of. Well, well, this one's we worse. Cross-corroborating false prophet. How's that? Well, no, but this one's worse. 
Okay, please. It continue. says that each of the thirteen levels of the pyramid of the Great Seal represent one of the, each of these of time periods. The top level would mark the year twenty twelve. Yeah, but if you may, if you multiply thirteen times uh, nineteen point seven, you get the year twenty thirty two. And while I realize that you can say that the top level is uh, possibly twenty twelve. I mean, this is this is this is, this is ridiculous. Yeah, it's, not, it's not good math, in other words. It's it's it's, it's not good math. So they're saying it's thirteen, but uh, we're going to make it twelve because that's the only way we can get this to come out. Yeah, yeah, no, I. Yeah, and, that's, and so, uh, so that that to me was that was one of the more bizarre. And, and now remember now, now remember I mentioned you have number eleven, number twelve. I want to re return to it for a second, just for a little humor here. Uh, that Webbot says uh, that Dr. Deagle is CIA and NSA, uh, and that. Uh, they don't want to hear the fact that we're going to cut through the BS because there are real disasters occurring. GMO food, depleted uranium, uh, wars that the globalists are promulgating. They go and try to apologize when they send over weapons to called Al-Qaeda through this place in Benghazi. They call a, a consulate office? No. Uh, the Ambassador Stevens was actually one of the main guys doing regime change with the 18 tribal uh, groups that were fighting each other to pass out weapons so they could overturn the regime of Muammar Gaddafi, who had a socialist uh, regime for his state, uh, for the state of Libya. These people were transshipping weapons systems through there, and I have it from my reports, really good ones, that the people brought him to the Stevens too after smoke inhalation to the hospital to save his hide. If they're real terrorists, they wouldn't have done that. The reason why he was brought to the hospital is because. From my reports, that they were going to exchange it for the blind shake. Obama wanted to grandstand again, like he did. A, he took the shot against Bin Laden, who, by the way, was dead from renal failure years before the so-called attack on Bin Laden in, in in this compound in Pakistan. This is a lie. This is more foolishness for public consumption. And the real issue is that what Obama's doing and has done now since the election is a time of sorrow. If you're looking at America as the only republic on earth, which is the only acceptable government by God, where the individual is protected from the majority, we're not spreading democracy around the world. We should be spreading republic, which means God first, man gets his right from God, not from government, and that the individual is protected from the state and from the majority. And we're not being taught that because that's a godly principle taught by people who firstly as uh, was said by the founders of the nation, you cannot have a nation stand unless they firstly are a moral nation that puts God first and the Creator above all else and government. And that's, yeah. and that's a major right, and that's a major problem in the United States. And again, that's that's something I'd like to go in more depth on uh, on Monday. But right now, let me just make a couple of brief comments. Yes. The you know I've, I've explained eleven reasons why the world's not going to end next week. Um, right. By the end of this month, three more predictions in my 2012 book will have come to pass because it's, it's, it's pretty obvious based on the Bible. And for yeah. listeners say, well, why they don't care about 2012, so why would they want a 2012 book? As you know, you've got my book. The focus is what happens after. Just after, after, yeah. Right. I, do, I document prophecies and things that people are going to want to watch for. And again, the book is free. We're not selling anything. It's 1-800-675-2012. It would be just an easy number to remember. You're not going to become part of some organization. You're not going to get anything. You're just going to get a phone machine. And if you're, again, free offer for your listeners. Uh, at That's amazing. 675-2012, we'd be happy to send them all a book. That's an amazing gift uh, in this, uh, this season. And again, remember, it's not Jesus' birthday. It's most likely uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. But the fact is, we remember and can speak about the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Father in the flesh. And now, as we approach this next foolish state that they want to push remember it's a dialectic of chaos by the evil ones to disallow the people really preparing for economic, environmental and other catastrophes that are very real thank you Dr. Bob Thank you, Dr. Teal, and we'll be back on Monday